there was a secret chord David played it pleased the Lord but you don't really care for music do you hello everyone welcome to the queer network with Lucio Nieto the singer songwriter who just released a new song on the queer network called hallelujah welcome Lucio thank a, you a familiar face and it's lovely to see you again <laughs> It's always so great to see you both. You both are so fabulous. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And thank Absolutely. you for debuting the music video. Absolutely. If, if you don't know who we are, my name is Justin Gerhardt. I'm Eddie Fritz. We are the creators of the Queer Network. And it is, uh, like I said, an absolute pleasure to get this opportunity to talk to you about this amazing music video and, and journey that you started as a singer-songwriter. Um, can we just dive right in to to this being the first song that you chose to do and why and, and what it means to you. Yeah, so this song has been in my life for the past two or three years. And it started when I was on a cruise with my family. Specifically, my grandmother's request was to travel through the Panama Canal. And she's rocking in her scooter and her wheelchair going around the, the boat and at the bar, we would hear hallelujah be played and the piano guy would play it or we'd go into a different bar on the ship and then hallelujah is playing and i am blessed with two mamas i got a stepmama and so my stepmama took me on this cruise and she's like oh, do you hear it the song's playing again and fast forwarding to when i lived in los angeles uh, i became an ordained minister maybe about four or five years ago and two of my roommates during quarantine fell in love and they wanted to have a ceremony and want to get married. And so we did something called a Nika, which is a N I K A H. And that's from uh, the Muslim background. And that's a spiritual union between the two people. And the request at the ceremony was that I sang hallelujah. And, you know, it had been so prevalent in my life and this experience. And I had, when I left Los Angeles, went through a breakup and rediscovered the song being about heartbreak and also about resilience and being able to let go of past love and being able to find your own hallelujah and your own redemption and your truth and being able to confront this opportunity to understand that love will come and go, but it's what you make of that situation. And so I moved to Galveston a little over uh, nine months ago and met someone at the coffee shop and he acknowledged my Hillary Duff concert t-shirt from 2004. Hello, what's up? We got to talking about music. He asked me to play uh, something on my guitar and I sang hallelujah. And then he said, hey, you know, I would love to produce this. And his name is Davey Wild and was on a cruise ship as well. And was the performer, the piano man, the, the, the guitar man, the drummer, the singer. And so we worked on this track for a good couple months and he did the arrangement. We wanted it to be different, but still have some, some of the original Leonard Cohen big harmonies and, and uh, Jeff Buckley haunting sounds of the whole track. And we developed this 80s soul rock retro vibe to it and felt like I was able to find my own expression within this piece. And that's how Hallelujah came to life. You know, one of our past conversations and uh, what was it about vulnerability? I think we were talking about and you pulled out your guitar and you said, um, you know, I want to play this for you guys. And you played Hallelujah on your guitar. And, and that was kind of the beginning for that. But, but I thought and for us and for and, and now we've come to this point where you've actually made the video. It's on our channel. And it's become this, this incredible um, piece of work. So like, where do these concepts come from? Thank yeah. you. You know, so I got to give credit where credit's due. And I had a, a powerful team working with me, one of them being my manager. And I remember I pitched him the deck for the music video. And it was me singing in a, in a, a mansion with, you know, some rugs and some beautiful architecture and he said lucio i've already seen this done before you need to be a little bit more creative and so i thought okay so i went back to it and then that vulnerability that you're talking about eddie is really where i had to acknowledge you know what is this song about 
And then once I got to the root of maybe where I didn't want to get to at first was when I experienced infidelity on my end when I was in high school. You know, I had a girlfriend and I had an affair with one of the guys in my high school. And, you know, that really was the the catalyst at coming out. Um, but what I had to face was dealing with my girlfriend at the time and her finding out that I was having this queer relationship behind closed doors. And so once I started to dive deeper into that and about this brokenheartedness and then finding the resilience, I realized this is my coming out story. So once I started to develop this, every aspect of the video is tied into some part of my queer identity, is tied into the female finding out about my relationship with men and the women behind the video. I mean, I was literally with only females that were on this project. And that alone was so vulnerable for me because that was the physical identification of the vessel that I felt like I betrayed. So being on set with these women to being able to experience this part of my past life and, and hold the space so comfortably for me was so powerful. Um, so the elements of, you know, where I have the gold tears, uh, Caroline is the stylist and she said, you know, this is very euphoria. This is uh, very much your your queer gorgeous moment and all the kiss marks that are not the red lips of Gabby, who was the star, my co-star, um, that's the kiss marks of the men. And that's really me standing tall, showing that this is, I can't hide anymore. And so when the hands come out and begin to grab, it's almost as if, from my experience, when I have found out that I've been cheated on, the first thought I have is anger, but then the second part is almost some type of arousal of being able to visualize what's happening. And I think in a lot of ways, sexuality is so fluid and there's no real clear black and white anymore. And I think in some ways when she delicately touches it, it's almost like, well, what is that? But then all of, of course the, the anger comes in of the portrayal. So then throughout the video, she begins to smear off these kiss marks. But what she's really doing is cleansing me of my shame and of my guilt. And so, when the scene happens, when we're in the woods, it's finding our innocence and her finding me to forgive me. Um, and what I love about the very end of the video is, we you know, when we're sitting side by side, you have to really pay attention to it. But when we're sitting there, she's got the masculine position and she's phenomenal, you know, because she choreographed all of the things that you see in the video to the dance and helping me with my movements. Um, but I'm wearing her red lipstick yeah. and she's wearing the cowboy hat as if you know we're seeing one another and we're being able to accept that I'm now taking on this femininity and she's willing to be able to be the balance because that happened in my real life. You know, I met with my ex-girlfriend, excuse me, so many years later in Los Angeles and she sat down with me and she said, hey, you know, I forgive you and I love you. And I, you know, I just, I was more sad that I felt like I lost a friend more than anything. So, you know, every aspect and element of this is a, a creative example of different versions of myself, of, of who Lucio is and who, who he was at that time. To hear how beautifully this is your coming out story, like that's just, that's very powerful. Well, and what a, what a, what a great way to tell the story. And I mean, that's what our channel is all about. You know, it's, it's about, it's about queer stories, you know, yeah. and, and the complicatedness of it all. I love that you talked about how this, this is not talked about enough. I don't think the, what, is, what the female goes through um, when, when she's broken up with because her boyfriend is gay or queer and what they, what, and then even you talking about the, the, but there's a betrayal there that needs to be acknowledged that is not just a normal betrayal. It's complicated because it's not that like you don't love this person. I've experienced mm -hmm. this myself. And I feel like there, there could be more work explaining and exploring this topic that it's because mm -hmm. it's layered. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. Yeah. So Lucio, what has the, uh, what has the reaction been? It's been very positive. You know, I, 
I am so humbled and grateful for people to one, I think the the reaction when I say, oh, I recorded uh, a record, a single record of Hallelujah, most people go, oh, I love that song. And some people go, you know, oh, I am a lover of Jesus. And that's my church song. And I think it's so beautiful because I think a lot of people do find that, you know, even my dad thinks the song at the beginning was about God. And it's, you know, I, I think because of how beautiful the melody is and how intoxicating it is with maybe the angelic qualities of how it moves and flows, the perception is that it is this God, Lord, Jesus song. And not that it's not, but I think when when people hear the version that they hear and they see the video, it's almost as if they have to redigest what they once thought um, the song was originally about. But so many people have reached out and have acknowledged the work and have celebrated the song. And, you know, my mom, she works downtown here in Galveston on the Strand and she's got her Amazon music playlist going. And sometimes my record will come on and she comes home and she goes, ah, Lucio, your song played. And I turned it up a little bit louder and people will come up and they'll say, oh my God, I love this song. I love this version. And then, you know, there's been a lot of compliments, a lot of compliments and a lot of, um, um, really, I think, unexpected, uh, visceral reactions. I think, uh, I think maybe I, I put this out hoping that, you know, it was going to like change my life in some grand way. And by letting go of whatever expectation that once was, and just being able to allow the piece to, to do what it needs to do, that has been so much more powerful. And, um, has it sparked more? What oh it? yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's Probably like, not. So right now I'm working on, a, on an album and this album is, uh, I've been writing often and there's a few new tracks that are already being developed and finding how I can use those elements of Hallelujah with this, this retro sound and almost this 80s type of synth reverb, but bring in some guitars and even a lot of pop. Um, right now I feel like what I'm working towards is this pop rock record that has a lot of retro soul influence where, you know, people want to dance. And I, I wrote a song actually very recently and it's called Scared. And it's me serenading my past lover of, hey, I hope you're healed and moved on. And I admit that I was scared, um, but it's got a dance vibe, much like maybe what Katy Perry would record. Because I think even in the midst of heartbreak, you want to dance when you want to be free. You know, and I think there's a lot to be said about you can put on a, a record that has these lyrics that are so, you know, invoking of, of your past of like what you did and how you want to let go and forgive. But when you can dance and move through it, our bodies are the temple that allows it to really exist to be free. So with this record, the intention is to create something that whether it's forgiveness or celebration, you're able to dance your way through it and find joy in the midst of all of your your past and your present for that matter when i met you you were much more pursuing acting and that performance aspect of your life and i'm curious how this this leaning into the music side of your of your craft has either influenced that change that or is that on hold to some degree or are they just finding a way to like blossom together what where where are those parts of your career at i still have a couple auditions that will come in you know given the fact that they, they can be virtual but right now the the focus is the music and i find that when i'm working on the music the acting seems to be much more authentic to who i am and i think a big part of what i had to face was when i was acting there was a little bit of the ego that was coming through of how am i being perceived and you know, is this what they want? And of course, that's the struggle, I think, for every artist of there's some part of us that want to be accepted. But after doing the Hallelujah music video and being able to wear heels more, more than one pair, right, and a rhinestone belt and have makeup, it's like there's nothing that I need to be worried about. So music is is really my focus and trajectory. And I'm allowing anything else to to receive itself in the field of acting if that were to present itself. But I mean, 
music is that's got my heart right now and i am obsessed with shows like american idol and the voice and songland it's like a master class and i watch all of them and then i come home and i'm like okay i gotta work on the hook i gotta work on the this you know and uh it, it's pretty powerful what advice would you give to someone who's looking to pursue music and maybe record a song and do a music video do it you literally are the vessel for it so if you are home and you have a paper and a pencil write your song write your melody if you've got a cell phone record it record your record your track record your harmony your melody whatever you want to do and then put it together i think a lot of times people feel like we do need of the guitarist or the piano person. You really don't. If, if you can create the melody, even if you do something a cappella, you can, you can produce that. You can create that. But also too, you know, if you do have a computer, um, which I find a lot of people might have some type of technical equipment, everything I'm creating for my new record is coming from GarageBand. They're loops that are programmed into my system. I'm downloading free packs from other websites that allow me to create my own tracks. They have drums and guitars and synth and bells and horns and cowbells. I mean, there's literally everything that's available and accessible to you. What I think the biggest thing is being able to trust that you know what you want it to be. And if it, even if it comes out completely different, just start dragging and dropping. Just drag and drop some loops. Just hit record and sing on something and just go for it. You don't need anything but yourself. You've got the expression for you. So lock yourself in your bedroom or go outside by the beach or sit in your backyard or sit on the patio and just start, yo, I'll be truthful. A lot of my songwriting comes in the bathroom. I'm at the urinal and I'm like singing a melody and I'm like, whoa, where'd that come from? And then I'll get my phone and be like, la, 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 la. And then I realize like I'm songwriting in the bathroom, but this is the only tool that I need is to record myself and then I'll play it back and just start writing. And then I do it over and over again to where I hear it. Anytime that we experience fear, you want to put a pause on something, but every time you stop creating, you are depriving a part of yourself that has the expression to live. And what I firmly believe is God is creation. Therefore, if we create, we embody God. When we stop creating, we lack God in our life. And I know how I am when I lack God. And that's when I'm lacking my creativity. So for anyone that wants to record a record, only you are going to have that song. So make the music that you feel called to create, because you never know what that could do for you as the vessel but for the audience and the best thing I heard, and this is for those music people who are like, I don't know what to do. Someone told me this and it totally moved mountains in my spirit. They said, your audience will find you. Your fan base will find you, but you've got to create the content first and then they will find you. And that brought me so much peace because I don't need to have everyone's approval, you know? And that's what freed me of being able to say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit record and I'm going to hit publish and we're going to do the damn thing. You know, what you said right in the very, very beginning is just do it. Just do it. Do it, just record it. And with the age of social media, put it out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Look yeah. at TikTok. People are becoming huge on TikTok because they're doing something else, you know, and a lot of things are doing the duet me. And it's, a, it's again, yeah. acapella, which means there's no track. So if you don't have a guitar, if you don't have a piano, so many people are just singing they're just singing and your voice alone is the only instrument you need because someone will find you and want to say, Hey, I want to be a part of your orchestra. I hear that you've got this lead. Let's help you put this together. And even if not put it together, your damn self, because you can do it. honey. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing and amazing advice and just an amazing energy behind all that you are creating and and your contribution to to the collective is is beautiful to witness so thank you and i'm grateful to be a part of this network that feels so aligned well so we're, gra we're grateful to have you and you know what it's not over it's not the end you know yeah. that's the that's the beautiful thing that we know we have such a great relationship um, with you and we know we will be talking to you more 
we'll be, you know, putting more of your stuff on our, on our channel and our network. And we're very excited to see, you know, what's next for you and to hear your new music and the album and everything. And, and man, you are just, you're, you're incredible. You're an incredible talent and, uh, and human being. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. That's so, thank you. I appreciate those words very much, very much. All right. Well, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. In the world of Zooming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amazing as always. We are so blessed to have Lucio as part of the network and have his video on there. You guys really have to check out, check it out. It's, Definitely. you know, and hearing him talk about it now, it's, it's, it's really quite amazing. And we're so excited for the new stuff to come in this new album. So exactly. This is, this has sparked so much for him, which is really exciting. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, speaking of sparks, and exciting, we, we have some sparks that are going off uh, later this week as well. Um, the Queer Network is releasing a brand new trailer teaser about the new direction or, or rather focus of the network. Not something unfamiliar to you all, but it's a, it's a focus that we really feel is important. Um, and so come back on Thursday for the, this teaser trailer that's going to tell you all about where we are headed and why we are so fucking excited about it. And, you know, to sum it up, it's about uh, queer stories and the people who make them. So make sure you come back Thursday to check out our new teaser trailer. And as always, keep, keep it queer. queer. The Queer Network is made by us, for us, and about us.